Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa al-aqibatu lil-muttaqeen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen nabiyyina wa maulana muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in All thanks is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator, sustainer, nourisher and provider the abundance of salutation and the best of salutations are sent to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family, upon his wives, upon his companions, upon all those who follow him ila yawmiddin until the day of qiyamah. Today inshallah ta'ala sticking to time, I want to go over some of the etiquettes of Eid al-Adha. It has been a common question that has been asked to me by the congregation and online and on my uh, email at my office. And that is, you know, what are the significance and importance of Eid al-Adha? Uh, because we have a very short time, inshallah, it is something that's doable. So, my respected brothers and elders, on the day of Eid al-Adha, it is a day where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the opportunity to sanctify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to be joyful. And to celebrate, celebrate the beautiful days, the best of days, Dhul Hijjah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights to us in the Quran and Kareem, the significance and the importance that there is no better days as a believer than the days of Dhul Hijjah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah accept our actions that we have been performing in the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. My respected brothers and elders, we all of this is contributed back to the actions and the sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ That when we look at the life of, of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam in a nutshell, what was significant about him and every story that we have heard about time and time again came down to the point, the belief, the blueprint of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam was aslam to the Rabbil Alameen. When Allah Ta'ala said, submit, do, sacrifice your son, leave your town, do this and do that. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam never paused for a moment, never put thought into it. Immediately at once he said, aslam to the Rabbil Alameen. When we look at this eye of the Quran very, very quickly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ in the middle here was supposed to be a wow. This wow in Arabic is called ataf. A wow that joins two sentences together. So when your Lord said to Ibrahim, submit. And then Ibrahim said, I submit. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the wow away to show us how quick Ibrahim alayhi salatu was was there to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He never asked questions. He never gave it any thought. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, then he said, Aslam to the Rabbil Alameen. And inshallah ta'ala, take out these days in the days of Dhul Hijjah to try and learn about Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the title of Khalilullah. No other human being, no other creation was given the title of Khalilullah, the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except for Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Why? Because of his submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we celebrate this day of uh, Eid al-Adha. Eid al-Adha, my dear brothers and elders, is a day that it is haram to fast. It is haram to fast on the day of Eid. There's a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that mentions, لا تسوموا في هذه الأيام فإن هذه الأيام أكل وشرب وبعال أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام. The hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions that do not fast on these two days, which means the days of Eid al-Adha and the day of Eid al-Fitr. As we know, Eid al-Fitr 
is one day of celebration and Eid al-Adha is three days that we celebrate. So the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, in these days, we do not fast. For these days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it for eating and for drinking and to spend time with one's family. So number one, no fasting on the day of Eid. Number two, the offering of Eid Salah. So after the Fajr, Fajr Salah, and when the sun has risen, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained upon us a very special Salah in gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is the Eid Salah. And as we all know, that the Eid Salah and the Khutbah is as important. Many a times people think that the Salah is the significant and the Khutbah is the Nawafil. No, it works as part of the ritual of the Eid prayer is that we remain after the Salah for the Eid Khutbah. The difference between the Yawmul Jumu'ah, the day of Jumu'ah Khutbah, is that we give the Khutbah before we do the Salah. But in the Eid prayers, we do the salah first, and then we do the Eid khutbah. But just as it is important for the Jum'ah to be accepted and validated, uh, the khutbah, the khutbah is as important in the Eid salah. As we all know, my respected brothers and elders, the number three is no optional prayers should be prayed between Fajr salah and the Eid salah. So when we come to the Eid ga, we just sit. There is no nawafil salah between the Fajr salah and the Eid salah. So when you do come, come in with salawat ala nabi, with takbir Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, and we sit and we wait for the salah of the Eid ga to become the first salah that we pray after the Fajr salah. My respected brothers and elders, number four, Woman attending the Eid prayers is as significant as the men attending the Eid prayers. In a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is mentioned that he emphasized the ladies also coming for the Eid ga or the Eid salah to the point that when ladies have hayth, they were also emphasized by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to come for the Eid ga, to come for the Eid ga even when they are going through their monthly, that they should also attend. They cannot pray, but they can be part of the Eid Ga. That is the significance that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emphasized the importance of ladies also coming, not just the men. My respected brothers and elders, when we, after we have prayed our Fajr Salah, then one of the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to perform ghusl. And this is not just for the Eid Salah, this is also for the Friday Jum'ah. And to one point that one day Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala he was about to climb the member and one of the Sahaba, he asked him, did you make ghusl? So it doesn't say, but we can read between the lines, a smell must be coming out or maybe his clothes look soiled. So he asked the Sahaba, did you perform ghusl? And the Sahaba said, no, Prophet of Allah, I didn't have time. And Umar al-Khattab ordered him to go and make ghusl, and they waited for him, and then they did the khutbah. Now we can't do that here in Australia because everyone has strict times, but this shows through Umar bin khattab the emphasis of the sunnah of performing a ghusl before we come to the Eid Salah. A side note, my respected brothers and elders, is that when we come for Jum'ah, it is as important that when we come, number one, we come made ghusl with the clean clothes. Sometimes in the Jum'ah, it's very shocking to see that people, yes, we are working hard in the day, but travel with clean clothes. When you come into the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if you're going to come in <clears throat> with your trady clothes, 
and your trady clothes has oil marks and it has, you know, soil, it has filth on it. In a place where people make sujood, when people sniff the carpet, where people are going to sit, we need to be considerate, not just because of the smell, but also keeping the place clean. So many a times we see brothers that are coming to the Eidgah or to the Jum'ah and they don't smell, they, they don't smell nice and they basically, their clothes are dirty. Let me add on top of that. Many a times the clothing that we wear when we go down in Ruku or we go down in Sujood, there we find the Eid Moon. It, it becomes exposed. Now the man standing behind, he's got to watch the full moon for the whole Salah. Now, not only does his eyesight go, but also batala salatuhu, his salah becomes batil because his aura is exposed. So my dear brothers and elders, take precaution when you come for Juma or when you're praying any salah, that one of the arkan, one of the prerequisites is that a person's covering the aura when they enter salah. Whilst in salah, we need to make sure that we have covered the aura. And the ruling is that in one particular posture, if the exposure of the aura is open in that posture, batala salatuhu, the salah becomes batil. So it's important, my respected brothers, sometimes it does happen, the shirt rides up, fix it in that position and make sure for the next salah, we're wearing long, uh, uh, you know, a long garment, uh, a big shirt, pull up our pants if we have to, or the base and safe thing is to carry a lungi. Everyone know what lungi is? What's another name for lungi? No? Huh? Sarong. Sarong. A sarong. You know? Oops. A, 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 a sarong. Carry a sarong when you go to work and tie it, inshallah, because what is more important than our salah in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And Allah knows best. Number two. Uh, no, sorry. Number seven. Eating before coming out. Now, the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would uh, make sure that he does not partake of meal and the first meal that he would take of is from the qurbani. The qurbani becomes the first meat that we eat from, my respected brothers and elders. Takbir, on that day when we wake up in the morning from Fajr, we should continue to make takbir. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alhamd As much as we can remembering, appreciating, showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the bounties that he has bestowed upon us, giving us life, giving us freedom, giving us fresh air, giving us food, and giving us children, being safe. There are, there are countless reasons why we can thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whilst we are making takbir inshallah ta'ala. Uh, number eight, wearing the best clothes. We make sure, my respected brothers, that the clothes that we're wearing is the best clothes that we have. And finally, the last one is that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized that when we come to the Eidgah, go in one particular route, and when we are going away from the Eidgah, go another route. This is a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So there may be other sunnahs that I have left out, but and my dear brothers, if we can try and inculcate this on the day of Eid, I want to also emphasize one thing before I end off. And that is, remember that the best action that you can do on the day of Eid al-Adha is slaughtering. And in our country, yes, there's a lot of legalities in regards to how we can slaughter and where we can slaughter. But if we follow those guidelines, remember, giving money to the poor is righteous. It is rewarding and we can do that anytime. But in this particular day, what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa did every year for 23 years was dhabah. He would slaughter in this time. So the physical slaughtering, unfortunately, the day of Eid al-Adha, some of us visit, some of us go back to work, but slaughtering has become something of the past. We need to remind our children. We need to show our children 
what we do on the day. Some of the kids, they can't even see the animal being sacrificed. This is part of our sunnah. This is part of our belief. They need to understand the circle of life. They need to understand the sacrifice of the animal. They need to understand the significance of our religion. Try and make it an emphasis, my respected brothers and elders, that we go out with our family and we slaughter for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finally, before I end off, another common question that's always asked, and that is, who should be giving, uh, who should be slaughtering? So there's difference of opinion. The Hanafi madhab differs from the rest of the scholars, the Hanabila, the Malikiya, and also the Shafi'iya. The Shafi'iya, Malikiya, and the Hanabila, they say it is Sunnah Mu'akkada. But according to the Hanafi, it's wajib. For who? For the one that falls in the category of zakat. For the one that falls in the category of zakat. And who are those? They will be an adult, a person, but it is sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we would try in a lifetime, at least make sure that every family member of the house, we have made an udhiyah for them, my respected <coughs> brothers and elders. My respected brothers and elders, finally, before I end off, today we have human appeal that is outside, inshallah ta'ala, giving us the opportunity to fulfill a great sunnah and for some of us wajib to send their slaughter to, uh, uh, to countries that are in dire need. They have people in the ground in multiple countries, inshallah ta'ala. So my respected brothers and elders, inshallah ta'ala, they will be outside if the brothers would like to buy a sheep or a cow, remember that a sheep or a goat uh, or a lamb is one share and a cow is seven shares. So if anybody would like to buy a cow and have seven family members, Bismillah. And if a person would like to buy a lamb, a goat or a sheep, then they are one shares. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. We ask Allah ta'ala to accept the day of Eid. Inshallah ta'ala here at the Bald Hills Mosque, we are following regional moon sighting with Holland Park, Karabi, UMB, and the majority of the Masajid. Inshallah, the Eid will be here at the Masjid on Monday. Monday, inshallah, takbir will start sharp and sharp at 7.30, inshallah ta'ala, we will start the Eid Salah. Shortly after the Eid Salah will be a very short khutbah. And then, alhamdulillah, the board has also put together a day for the brothers and sisters to come with their family and celebrate Eid, inshallah, and share in the joy and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa akhiru da'wana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Fassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.